Welcome to Sausage on a Fork, a podcast dedicated to the UK's longest running children's drama programme, Grange Hill. My name's Neil, and in each episode, I'll interview a former cast member about their life before, during, and after their time on the programme. Welcome to Sausage on a Fork, a podcast dedicated to the UK's longest running children's drama programme, Grange Hill. My name's Neil, and in each episode, I'll interview a former cast member about their life before, during, and after their time on the programme. Okay, welcome to the next episode of Sausage on a Fork. I'm very pleased to say that this week I've been joined by Lisa York, who played Julie Marchant. Lisa, welcome to Sausage on a Fork. Thank you. Okay, if we can just jump just jump straight into it and we'll go right back um, to before uh, you were in Grain Shell. How did you get into acting? How did it all start for you? Uh, well, I heard Fiona say something, and it was quite similar to me, actually. Um, I was about three or four years old, oh. and I was copying older kids in my street, um, dance moves, basically. And someone suggested to my mum at the time that I joined the local dance. Oh, that's okay. So I did that. Yeah, okay. So w- when you started uh, the dancing, was it like just... Uh, look like a, just a local thing, just just on Saturdays, or was it with a with a, a point to going out and getting professional work? No, it was it was a very small. Um, well, actually, it wasn't that small, but there was. Um, it, I think it was there on a Thursday or something. Uh-huh. But uh, Sylvia Young had some kind of tie with the dance school, right. and um, when I was about three, well, it's 74, so well, it's not 73, so I was four. Um, there was an audition for The King and I up in the West End, and I went for that and got it, basically. Um, so I started quite young, really, but mainly theatre at the time. Uh, and then with, with, with the links to Sylvia Young, did you then start attending the Sylvia Young School? Is that how you then progressed? Not there? at all. No? Was, no, not at all. It was really weird because through the dance school, Sylvie had, as I said, connections to it. Um, So I got this audition, but I wasn't tied to her agency because my dad didn't want me involved in any of that really at the time. Um, In between that, my mum died. So she saw me um, performing The King and I. But when I auditioned them, I think I was about eight for Annie. Mum wasn't alive then. And then... um, Again, this was through Sylvie, um, so I got Annie at the time. Um, but for some reason, my dad didn't want me to sign up with an agent, though so she took a 10% or whatever it was at the time. Um, I wasn't officially uh, a Sylvie Young's child, and plus she didn't have a stage school at the time. I think her stage school came about in about 1981, I think. So obviously doing Annie, and I did that um, over a sort of a... I was in it four times, basically, from paying Molly, the little one, <clears throat> up to um, uh, July, I think I played. And then I was the understudy for, for everyone, apart from Annie, because I wasn't that great at singing. <laughs> right. Um, oh, it's OK. Um, and then there were people there that, um, that I met that went to Italia Conti, and I auditioned for that and got into Italia Conti. And I was still doing Annie at the time. Um, but a lot of the... I came out of the East End. And, um, to go to a, one of those kind of schools, it cost money. Right. And the local authority pretty much gave me a grant to attend the school. Wow. I wasn't the only one. Newham Council at the time was fabulous, allowing us sort of kids that didn't come from wealthy families to attend schools like that at the time. Oh, right, so no, that's uh, that, that's really good, isn't it? Like, um, I, I, ima- I, I imagine there must have been a few. We all come out of Newham, and there was loads of us that went to uh, Talia Conti. Oh, brilliant! Um, and, at various stages. Yeah, and did you get to work with um, with anyone famous during that time in the theatre? Was there any sort of big stars that you were working with, or anything like that? Uh, well, maybe the audience that this is going to may, maybe not. But Jack, uh, not Jack, what was his name? Who played Jason in um, oh, Peter Wingard? All right. He was um, the king. 
Um, oh, I've forgotten the ladies. Sally Ann Howe was the, um, the lady in The King and I. Uh-huh. Um, Stratford John, Sheila Hancock were my sort of Daddy Warbucks and um, mm-hmm. Miss Hannigan and various, I mean, the, you know, like Casey Ainsworth was in my cast. Who right. was went on in EastEnders and that, and I'm sort of still in talk, you know, we still talk on Facebook yeah. or whatever. But, you know, we, we sort of was in a really good little team at the time. In, right. when, I think July and she was Tessie at the time. Right. But, yeah. But that's what I really wanted to do at the time. I wanted to uh-huh. be on stage, yeah. All oh, right. So about something random, really. Yeah, so so how did that come about then? How, how did Grange Hill come about? They, well, I think um, originally, I think I auditioned, but I was still doing... Um, Annie at the time for the Annette Fay group. Yeah. But I didn't go on any further. And then um, the next lot cohort came in and me and Vince Matthews, who played Jeremy. Oh, right, yeah. All the time. I was a bit of a tomboy at school and I broke my arm playing football. And right. I had really short hair with a great cast on me, my arm. And Kenny McBain, who was the... Uh, Produ- was he a producer? I think he was a producer. Yeah, I think he was. Uh, yeah. um, made us audition, but it was it wasn't a scripted thing. So basically, put like a soapbox on um, on the ground uh-huh. and asked us to sort of be on a soapbox and start talking whatever. And I was thought I was slightly political at the time. <laughs> it was a proper sort of like really into the unions and everything. So I think that's sort of, I and mean, obviously I didn't have a mum. So I think that sort of influenced me. Mm-hmm. at the time and um so yeah I think I rambled on and I don't think he I think he just thought oh yeah I'll have a <laughs> <And> <laughs> right, so okay yeah so the pair of us yeah because obviously you joined in 83 uh, series six your year group had, had already been there for a year so did you watch Green Jill loved I, I, it I, yeah so how did you feel joining that cast yeah absolutely fine it was a bit weird because um I'd obviously got the uh, part, and um, I'd been, I was, I was in, on holiday in Austria, which is another random thing with a girl from school. And uh, then I literally got back on the Saturday, and the Sunday I was going down to Wales. Right. And it, I was quite nervous. I remember meeting at uh, Milan Station, and uh, we drove down there, and uh, it was great. And we all had, it was in this sort of outward bound centre. And um, we was all put in bed, like bunk beds, like with the girls' dormitory and the boys' dormitory. Yeah. And I woke up for, to film, and I think I was like one of the first people to start filming that day. But my neck was like crooked. I was like that. And I, I was in agony. I could not do a thing. And like I'm trying to do my, my scene, and I'm, you know, quite, I was the newbie. And my neck was like to my shoulder, and wow. it was becoming bearable. And then I think, I don't know if it was a, a makeup artist or somebody like that sat me down and literally crooked my neck back into place. <laughs> um, so that was my first day experience of filming. And so your your first um, part of filming was the Outward Bound Centre trip. Is that yeah. wow? You can see I look like a boy. Like, <laughs> right. I had like a really short haircut at the time. Um, but I loved it there. It was such a laugh. Yeah. That like, film. Filming outside, like out, outside scenes, yeah. if we was going away or on location, that's the word I'm trying to think of. Location filming was the nuts. It was such a laugh to do. Um, and to, to experience all the different things that you did. So that yeah. was the Outward Bound Centre. We were rock climbing, abseiling and uh, canoeing and all these different things. But we was actually doing that as fun as well. So some of the scenes were filming. Uh-huh. But then, obviously, we're there for a month, I think. So you actually get to do all these different things as well. So being a 13-year-old kid, because I think this was 82 when we first started filming it. Right. It wasn't out to 83. Yeah. Um, you know, I was like, oh, my God, I'm, you know, I've come out of London. You know, like, we didn't experience anything yeah. like that. And I loved it. I th- and I thought I was a bit of a boy at the time. <laughs> um, I was quite tomboyish, actually. Um, yeah. So I got way involved in all the the things but no Wales was a screen yeah and, and what a start for you as well like because I, yeah. I imagine I imagine going away 
might might have made it easier to get to know the the people you'd be working with as well, like you know the the likes of uh, Alison and and Lee. Oh, the Lees were little rascals to be fair. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, I think Diane Cooney and Julianne still joined the same sort of time as I did. Right. And uh, I don't know. We, it must have been downtime or something. And Lee, the two Lees actually started bundling her or something, and it. It was only rough play. It was, it was nothing malicious at all, but she yeah. fainted. Wow. And right, it, okay. was like, it was like, oh, my God. It was quite a big, uh, I mean, it was nothing really. Yeah. Uh, but no, it was fun. Oh, Good fun. Excellent, excellent. Because you also, was it that year when you did St Albans as well? Was that in yeah. this, this, the same year? Because... I actually, I, I, I was watching that episode of just in preparation um, for this today, and it actually, your, your storyline in that episode, it, it got quite, it, like, it gets quite dark um, um, with that. And, and when you think about, like, the fact that it was going out for kids at tea time, um, or even last night I was thinking that it's amazing that that, that storyline was on at that time for kids with, where they... Uh-huh. For, for anyone that's listening that doesn't know, um, Lisa's character, Julie and, and another girl, Annette, uh, just get in the car with two, uh, with two lads who said they'll give them a lift to somewhere in, in, in St Albans. But then it just takes a really dark twist with, with these two lads saying they'll drive them back. if And, and it's, it's alluded to, but not mentioned. It's sort of, we, we'll give you a lift back if you do something for us. And I was watching it and thinking, that this is... It's really, really, really amazing that it was out for kids to see at that time because things like that, you know, do go on. But but things like that had never been shown on kids' telly before. Um, exactly. So that it's 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 that thing when when people say about Grange Hill being the groundbreaking thing that it is. I I, I just think that's that storyline is a uh, it it was almost horrific for kids to see it, um, but needed to the kids needed to it needed to be shown. Like, yeah, it was I mean, really bizarre though because at the time I didn't. Obviously, I was with Nadia, and it, it didn't feel at the time to be such a dramatic yeah. story. And to be fair, I had not seen that in a long time. Uh-huh. However, there's the, my voice, I know, is so high in it. Um, I, I mean, it's so squeaky, so that always stands out. And me and Nadia, we was, we'd gone, to, we was um, on the coaches, they take you everywhere to uh-huh. different locations, and we somehow ended up in a, uh, a petrol station like a big petrol station mm-hmm. and we both decided we wanted to buy these do you remember the watches that you used to get where it was like digital yeah it, oh and with parents we both had to go matching <laughs> right. digital watches bizarre <laughs> yeah but uh, it, i mean i as i said i don't I, i'm terrible really because i haven't seen a lot of them yeah. so for a long, as I said, a long time. So I can't even remember some of the episodes or scenes. Uh-huh. But that one obviously does stick out. So who were you? Who, who were you closest to on the show? Who, who were sort of like your best friends? To be fair, I got on with pretty much everyone. Obviously, Bettles, Alison, yeah. I'm still really good friends with right. now. Um, Paul Van Bland, I'm really good right. friends yeah. with. We went to school together, so uh-huh. and you know, you know, when you get lots of different WhatsApp groups, yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, do you know what? They, I couldn't really say a bad word about any of them. Nadia, I hadn't seen Nadia in years. I mean, probably 25 years. And um, we had obviously had the 40th anniversary. Uh-huh. And she, she, she wasn't sure she was going to come and whatever. And I just remember her walking in and Alison and I were like, oh, my God. Like, we were so, so ecstatic to see her. Yeah. And then after that, uh, me, Alison, her, and um, a, a guy who played Larry, Andrew Cornell. Yeah, yeah. We all ended up in a pub in the East End because um, one of Andrew's mates was singing there. Right. And I've got the video, it's so funny. <laughs> so then Andrew gets up and starts singing Sweet Caroline. And right. There's all of us, and it was just such a blast to be with her because I hadn't seen Andrew in so long as yeah. either. So obviously the Lees, Erkan, I mean, like me and Erkan lived literally so close to it. We came from the same part of London. Oh, right, okay. So I, you know, I'd see him. But yeah, I can't really say, there was, I mean, you know, Mark Burdis, you know, 
So yeah. tally, you know, all of them. Yeah. Oh, They're all really nice people, really. I can't can't play at all. Who did you enjoy working with the most? Did you ever get a, a thing where you thought, oh, I'm working with them today, or I've got to see them with them today, or was, was there anything like that? Um, I loved, I, I think that was, yeah, well, Series 6, the uh, Whipper Stetson racial oh, yeah. thing, yeah. the, the McDuffie. Um, I couldn't really say a particular person I liked working with, but it was, because it was such a blast to do. It felt like it was at school, but sort of filming, but yeah. it was, it, it didn't feel like an acting job, so to say. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. Not it a... was just a load of kids having a laugh, really. I asked Ricky this question the other week. You weren't involved with running over into the top of the pops or anything like that, were you? But I wasn't. No, I, no. <laughs> I didn't sneak it. There is somebody I know that snuck in. Right. Um, do it um i was slightly stuck because the original series was filmed at the bbc center uh-huh. and uh i mean we were a little bit naughty because we used to run around and cause riots and different other things but i actually remember i was a madness fan massive massive i loved scar music at the time really all scar i really really enjoyed and we were running and run, oh, probably with sparks you know in, <laughs> I don't know okay. what's going on. <laughs> Running with him, probably, or Radisson, and um, literally crashed into Chrissy Boy, who was no way. at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I was a starstruck. <laughs> I really was. Bear in mind, like, I got Elton John's um, autograph because he was there, you know, like silly things like that. Uh-huh. But I was more starstruck by Chrissy Boy from Madness. Oh, excellent. excellent. So, yeah. Um, so we, we, we've mentioned a, a, just a couple of the storylines. Do you have any favourite ones yourself? Any favourite storylines? Any favourite episodes? As I said, lo- doing the location episodes and uh, obviously way the best. <laughs> I loved an episode that um, me and Nadia did, obviously, in there, and we have a fight or something about yeah. camera. Um, but I can't, I really can't pick a particular thing is it, it, they all sort of seem to roll in one yeah. it's just yeah, us all having a laugh yeah i know it sounds very unprofessional but <laughs> we were kids <laughs> yeah no that, that's it that, that's it exactly like and you've got like what you know 30 40 kids together you, you, you you're going to have a laugh aren't you Let, let's be honest they, they used to literally be about 40 kids on set at, at one time yeah start, especially if you are doing location scenes yeah there was like we was like an yeah. army yeah, and I, and I hope you don't mind. There's just a couple of things I've just picked out um, over the years that you were on there. The first one is mm. um, the Brighton Rock musical. I watched that episode the other day, and you were not involved in that. Is, was there any particular reason? Yeah, you... it was, yeah. A lot of my, my um, Conti friends, were like Italian Conti people, were in it. Uh-huh. Um, Louis Spence is in it, actually. Louis Spence is in it, yeah. yeah. Um, I was getting in a little bit of trouble at school. Ah, oh, right, okay. And I was a bit, I'd say, I wouldn't say rebellious, but a bit arsy. And right. uh, we, some of us from the fourth year and, and the fifth year got put into a separate class because um, we were doing, I was doing, and a few others were doing our maths and English the year yeah. early. So I would have oh, done right. it in the fourth year rather than the fifth year. And I was a bit arsy. And I remember being in a classroom Bear in mind, it's probably not the whole truth. This is how my head right, remembers okay. it. Right, <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, how I remember it. And I was trying to catch up with some homework um, through through different lessons. Bear in mind, it was a stage school, so yeah. we weren't particularly educated well. Yeah. And there was a particular maths teacher, Miss Standish, <laughs> and uh, she was looking at me. She said, what are you doing? I went, she said, uh, you, you, what are you doing? I said, I'm catching up with... Um, some homework. And then she said something really random. And she turned out and said, you know, we can make you not be on brain chill. I went, well, like cocky. I went, my contract's with the BBC, not Italia Conti. Oh, wow, and right. literally, <laughs> no, I was so gobby at the time. And I think that was, poss- let's say, Monday. By the Friday, I'd gone home from school, all happy. And then my dad looked white as a sheet and he went, I had a phone call from the school. You're not doing brain tumor anymore. I lost it. I mean, I was hysterically crying. I mean, I was wow, devastated. Right. 
because one, I was so frustrated that they had the power over me to, yeah. to make that happen, um, which in fairness, they probably thought I was a little so-and-so at school, which is fair enough. Um, don't, by the way, I did love my time there. I'm not saying it's all. Right there. Um, I was probably a little sod. Um, so that was the Friday, and I was, as I said, devastated. Uh-huh. By the Monday, my dad came up to the school, and I had to go and see Mr. Mr. Vogt, who was my um, headmaster, and the principals. And dad had to sort of plead my corner for me to be reinstated, basically. Uh-huh. But I was doing O levels at the time and they said I could do a reduced amount of episodes basically so uh, yeah so that that was the because I, I love Brighton Rock yeah. not that I can sing but that would be right up my street were you I were, remember seeing the episode were, were, you, were you ever were you ever supposed to be in it did they ever have a part for you in that I, I very much doubt it they probably not that I know of anyway right not that I know yes. of so so then you got you were reinstated and, and all was good again. I'm 16 and I literally had I you know my actual contract was with the BBC because technically I was an adult. Then, yeah. So I could stay in it. Okay. Um okay then. So then the the following year, um series nine, probably the biggest thing that ever happened with Grange Hill was just say no. And you're right in the middle of the, the music video and, and the record with the, with the dancing and everything. And, and you feature quite a lot in some of the some of the, the singing group scenes and stuff like that. And you were in the year group of Zamo and, and Roland and Jackie. And then the White House trip comes along. The whole subject. <laughs> and obviously uh, you, you didn't get to go on that. Was there any any reason for that? Again, I don't know the reason. All I know is Tim, Polly and I didn't get to go. Right. Um, I don't know. To this day, I don't really know the reason uh-huh. at all. Um, I know they only they had to take so many and it obviously it had to be a mix of the cast. Uh-huh. I think Tim and I were just like outed, basically. No, you're uh, not going. Can I, can I ask you... It, how you felt about that? If you don't want to answer, then you don't need to. <laughs> At the time, I was pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, uh, oh look, it is what it is, isn't it? So yeah, don't worry, it's gone. Well, that, that's but yeah, I think I'd like going to see the the White House actually. Yeah. <laughs> In another life, mate. Okay, um, and then the following year, eighty seven, um, I think, or series ten, anyway, was I think was your last series if, I, if if I'm correct and obviously you had the, the barge trip which fans of Grange Hill love the barge trip episodes when, when people talk about it how did you find that experience loved it we were yeah. 16 back in those days you didn't have to show ID to go anywhere <laughs> right okay. we could get into any place not necessarily on the trip it was just our lifestyle at the time but uh-huh. literally not being able to have, I mean as much as I love June God rest her soul and the others the freedom not to sort of be told off and uh, reprimanded that by um, if you're getting up to stuff. But no, the freedom of just being an adult, so to say, of um, going there. And it was a laugh. It really was a laugh. And obviously, um, Freddie Mannerin, I, I was a, he was the year below me at school, um, but I went to school with him anyway. So it was like my little brother, even though yeah. I was sort of going out with him in French Hill. Yeah. So then that's your last, that was your last series, uh, I think, yeah. on that one. Was was going back, because you were in sixth form then, was going back for the second year of sixth form, was that ever discussed? Or was it just... I don't it? think there was, that was it, yeah. As, as far as I'm aware, I think they probably had enough of us by then to be <laughs> <laughs> rid of them now. How, what was the public reaction to uh, to Julie? Like, did you ever, you know, when, when you were out and about? Most good I, I remember someone putting some soiled knickers through my door oh, nice. um, that, seriously um, right. I give a uh, <laughs> that was probably the, the worst of it thankfully I didn't thankfully my dad <laughs> discovered those um, but on the whole fine it used to be there was a, a little junior disco in Ilford and uh, I remember me Lean Spark Diane Cooney, uh-huh. Julianne Steele, and 
a guy called Glenn who was like a main extra in it and we went to this junior disco and it was all fine and then all of a sudden you're surrounded by and it was quite scary right yeah but the worst time was me Ricky and Lee were I don't even I think we were auditioning for something I can't remember you'll have to ask Ricky about this <laughs> but we were filming in a in a school in Hackney it was an all-girls school uh-huh. and um so we'd been filming there for I don't even know what we were doing there, to be honest. And we all left. And Lee, Mac and I started to try and get out of the school. And these kids went nuts for Lee. I mean, literally, they, they, my earring got pulled out. I mean, not malicious. It wasn't malicious whatsoever. Yeah. I think they was just so, like, you know, in awe of Lee, really. But I, I bear in mind, I was half the way. And I, all I remember of them is literally picking me up and I'm running through the street with like literally holding yeah. it. Um, oh, it's bizarre. It right. was bizarre. And that's probably the hysteria. I mean, we did something up in um, Liverpool, I think, Soap Aid, which was quite mad. Yeah. That was like, his, you know, a bit of hysteria, I suppose. But to be fair, I mean, I was only Julie Martin. It's not like I was Tucker Jenkins or anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I was away with a lot. So when you were up in Liverpool, was that when you were playing football at Goodison Park? No, I didn't get to do that either. Did you? No, no way. <laughs> I'm only joking. I don't even know why I didn't get to do that. No, we did a, it was called Soap Aid or something. And uh, I think Brookside, us, and I, I can't remember who else was there. Um, and it was like a live aid thing, but full of soap stars. And I think we ended up performing Just Say No on, on the stage, lip syncing, obviously. <laughs> um, I flew up there. I think I was in the air for about 15 minutes. Yeah, it was just wow. bizarre. So then, obviously, you know, we've just mentioned there, like uh, Series 10 comes about um, and you end up uh, leaving Grange Hill. How did, you, how did you feel about leaving Grange Hill? I, I thought I was going to be the next you know, star. Yeah, right. Um, oh, I'm joking. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I had full intention of trying to carry on with acting. Um, but then I met Lee. Well, I didn't meet Lee. We sort of started going back out, to, or started going out with each other. Uh-huh. And um, I was temping. He was working in London. And I was getting odd jobs. Uh-huh. You know, I, I think I, I auditioned for Diane in EastEnders. Obviously didn't get uh-huh. that. Which is probably not a bad thing, actually. Um, and then we just we went to Australia, so we was out there for a, a year and a bit, and we came back, and then I got a job at working in the city. And at the time, that was much more lucrative than trying to be a job in actor. Right, I get you. So I stayed there for a long while until I fell pregnant with my daughter, basically. Right. Okay. So did you did you make that conscious decision of coming away from acting then, or? Did it, was it just a natural thing? I think, well, I think it was a, probably a natural thing. I don't, you know, I wasn't getting the work at the yeah. end of the day. Um, and I just think, you know, it, and it was such, I know it sounds a bit arsy, but it was such a laugh. It was like the early 90s. So you can yeah. imagine like London, I was working for a futures exchange, you know what I mean? So right. it was, yeah. it was the life, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, you know, it was out. Everyone was going out and enjoying themselves. Um, so yeah, I I I did do some uh, amdram or uh, amateur dramatics in my early thirties because there was still something in me. I've I've always liked performing or acting. Uh-huh. Um, but life gets in the way, doesn't it? You know, you have yeah. children. You know, yeah. stuff like that. What do you do now then? I work in a lab. Right, it's okay. I work in a hospital, but we work in a pathology lab. Oh, I mean, it's only a part-time job. I've, I've been there for about fifteen years. Um, yeah. It is it is quite a laugh. Yeah. In a laugh, but you, you know, you're de- dealing with specimens, so it'll yeah. be like, you know, histology specimens or poo specimens. Right. So you know, you have to deal with all of that, really. Yeah. But yeah, no, fine. It's, I've got my dad now who I care for, so right. I'm trying to balance the two. So the so the job you do now, did you have to um, go back to uni or anything like that for doing that? Like no, no, right. no, no, no. Um, I did do because at one stage I wanted to do nursing, so um, I did do 
a thing called cadet nursing in between that, um, which I think gives you an MVQ3 or something, which then would allow me to go off and, and uh, start my nurse training because that was something I was thinking about doing at one time with the kids being so young. Right. But Joe was just about to go, which is my youngest uh -huh. child, was just about to go into um, reception year. And I was worried that he wouldn't, not like my daughter, I didn't think he would settle that well. So I was going to like take a year out, work. It, I did actually start working for a hospital, but um, not as a nurse. Uh -huh. And um, I never went back. So I feel right. bad. <laughs> uh, Right. Okay. Um, would you ever consider going back into acting? Yeah, I would actually. Uh, I wouldn't have a clue where to start. And I don't know. I don't know if I've got the confidence that I had. As, I mean, I was quite a cocky kid, I think, growing up. Right. Um, well, mouthy. That's what I'd say I was. Right. Okay. As a kid. Um, I don't know, if, you know. I don't know if I would have the confidence to do it now. Uh -huh. Even doing this is quite nervous. <laughs> yeah, right, quite okay. Nervous. So, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm not great, great at anyways. But if you're actually performing, it's a different kind of fish, I suppose. Kind of, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. So um, you mentioned uh, a couple of a couple of people that you, you are in touch with, um, mm. you, and you mentioned. Um, Paula and Bland, uh, you've mentioned, you know, is there, is there anyone else who, who you're like really, really close to now? Uh, well, we've been fortunate enough to uh, meet up on occasion now. I mean, Alison is obviously the one I'm probably the most closest to in a, in a sense of being in, in the same year group as her. Yeah. She doesn't live that far from me. So nice. funny enough, we, we, you would message me on um, Sunday. I'd actually spoken to her. She'd rang me. She was going somewhere. Right. Uh, Paula is, as I said, is in a, a, a different WhatsApp group, but I'm, you know, close to her. Yeah. Uh, Erkan, love him dearly. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen Lee Mack for a while um, at all, actually. Not not because he didn't do any of the reunion stuff. No. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I mean, we all sort of meet up on occasion, really. Yeah, because you were obviously um, before the the fortieth reunion. Were you involved in the Bring Back Range Hill with uh, Justin Lee Collins? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. How, was, how was that one? That was. Oh, I wasn't going to do it. It was really funny. Oh, I oh, love Fleur as well, and Ruth. Love those oh, two. Yeah, yeah. A bit younger than uh, in a different. Yeah. Thing. But um, yeah, I was involved in that, and I remember. I, I think Alison rang up and said, I'm oh, doing it. And I was like, oh, no, it's going to be a piss take. I don't want to do it. <laughs> you know, you think, oh, this is going to be really not good. Anyway, I ended up doing it. Um, thankfully, I didn't have to do the, like, the interview bit. I was like, some. Right. But it, again, like, we went out for a meal after. I mean, obviously, Joanne Kenny, I mean, she's no longer here now. God, yeah. God um, but, you know, it was nice to see her... Mark Savage, I hadn't seen in a long time. Um, Tim Polly, I mean, he was yeah. in Spain. So that flew him in. I I always thought it was quite a coup getting um, getting Mark Savage in because I I, I remember a program the BBC did about act, actors who'd gone from Grange Hill to EastEnders, and then they did little snippets of what the actors were doing now, and they didn't know where Mark Savage was. It was like Mark uh, whereabouts unknown. And then obviously he turned up on that, and I thought that's amazing that that they've got him on that because yeah. obviously and obviously like George Wilson was on that as well, wasn't he? And, and, oh, and the, I the, love George. He interviewed him on that as well, didn't he? But I remember as a, a you know a, as a Green Jill fan, loving that program and just and just seeing, especially at the end when when like the likes of yourself and and Joanne and Tim and everyone came on, I thought no way if they got them as well. My only disappointment with that program was that it wasn't longer. <laughs> that was the, my only no. disappointment. <laughs> But you all looked like you had a ball doing that as well, especially when you were um, breaking out the sign language as well for the for just say no as well. Like you all looked like you had a ball yeah. on that one. Just just a few more questions and um, just 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 before we finish. Other than Julie Marchant, who was your favourite character on the show? If I was gonna, if I'd like to have played a part, it would have right. been Sue Tully's. All oh, right, yeah, mm -hmm. she was. Uh, 
quite a feisty one, wasn't she? <laughs> Suzanne Ross, she was a good one there. Um, okay then. Um, that was that was going to be my next one of all. Who would you have liked to have played? But uh, it's a sort of amalgamated the two there. Um, and so my last question is: Why do you think then there is still such a great affection? for Grange Hill. Why do you think people like myself are still talking about it? Well, no one really spoke about it for a good number of years, uh-huh. but after about 2008, I think people started to get more interested because it was like the 30th anniversary. Uh-huh. And obviously as time goes on, people are so into nostalgia. Yeah. And face it, we all grew up. I think one of your guys who you've interviewed has already said, there were four channels yeah. and it, you know, at the um audience that Grange to get was phenomenal really yeah I mean yeah. I don't think vendors get that today yeah um and you know I think you can all relate to most of us who came uh-huh. you know not posh school yeah could relate to people that went to Grange Hill yeah um and the story I mean I know people's mums watching it but um I think secretly we're all quite rebellious and we all like to know I think I think a, 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 a lot of children went round to their friends to do their homework when they, when Green Hill was on. Yeah. Uh, well, Lisa, thank you very much for agreeing to come on. Um, I know I know you were a little bit apprehensive about it, but it's been it's been yeah. great listening uh, to your experiences. So thank you so much uh, for coming on. Uh, and, uh, thank and, you. And, and talking about it. It, it, it's been wonderful. And for those of you who are listening, I will speak to you next time.